What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, got another tutorial, another how-to, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is two-toning, uh, this is a diffuser. This process will work on pretty much anything though. Um, you'll see that I use like the hard lines uh, to define the two-tone. So, um, want to give you guys a reminder, the day after this video comes out, so I think this will be uh, the 12th of July, um, doing a YouTube Live Q&A at noon, 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Um, not going to be in the shop doing anything, just going to be on a computer answering your guys' questions. I'm going to have some stuff with me to show you guys. Uh, we're also doing the drawing giveaway that uh, during that time as well. Um, don't have to be present to win. Um, I already have all the names put in, um, you know, the drawing, the entry for the drawing ended the 1st of July, so got all those names gathered. I think there was well over a thousand entries for this, so, um, you know, we'll be giving that away, and then I think following, the following Monday will be the 13th, and we'll be starting another giveaway for you guys, so I uh, got about five giveaways coming up. I'm going to run three kind of simultaneously, so um, I guess expect to, to try to win some things. Uh, this video you're just going to end up seeing, uh, at the very beginning of this video, just me doing some sanding work on the edges. Um, I'll explain it in detail a little bit later in the video why I go about that. And then you'll actually see the, the real reasoning for it kind of in the end, because if you don't do it, your life will suck trying to do it this way. So uh, keep in mind this process works on almost everything. It does not always work with every color. So um, I have another tutorial coming out pretty soon that's going to explain kind of what colors can and can't go together and different ways of testing them to to see if they'll work out. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, enjoy the video. Now that we got these things uh, stripped, blasted, uh, they've been out gas, blasted them again, just lightly. Um, went through and sanded the edges uh, that we're gonna be making the copper color. Um, these were cut on like a water jet, I think, and not a very good one. You could see there was a bunch of like striations, a bunch of lines in all this. So <clears throat> we're gonna, um, you know, I went through and sanded all these. We're gonna throw the copper on it right now, do a partial cure on that and then uh, pull them back out and then be getting the tuxedo black, the Ford tuxedo black. So, got a bunch of these to do. I don't know how many panels there are. There's probably like, I don't know, eight, nine panels plus the big one. Um, we'll throw the uh, base coat on these and get started. So now uh, we got just this first piece up here for now to show you. Um, this is the fireside copper. It's on the very edge of this piece of diffuser here. Um, and we sanded all the edges, uh, all the visible edges to make sure they were nice and smooth because uh, if not, they had all these weird grooves in them. Um, now we're gonna throw in, this is Ford Tuxedo Black. Uh, this is from Prismatic, so it's called Tuxedo Black, but it's a match to Ford's uh, Tuxedo Black color. Shooting this at 45 kV, um, I got the dual coat tip on, the extended tip, just because it is going to be going over some powder that's already there. Um, I can actually get away with doing it with a regular tip uh, in this situation, but I'm going to use this one just to be sure. I don't want to have to recoat anything. So we're going to throw powder on this thing. 
Uh, same way we always do. And this is just, uh, Ford Tuxedo Black, if you don't know, is just a metallic black. It's just a gloss metallic black. It's a great color. Um, it's definitely my go-to for metallic black, so people want them. This is the one I choose all the time, um, unless they ask for something else. But And now uh, to the fun part. So obviously with the Fireside Copper being on the edges, we only want to have powder on that edge line. Let me grab another clip. So, if you guys have seen me do two-tone stuff before, I always end up with a microfiber, usually a microfiber, and I get it damp, uh, not crazy wet, just, just a bit damp. Um, and I'm gonna use that to wipe my finger off of and keep my finger kind of moist, just so it's easier to knock the powder off where we want. Um, because this is hanging, obviously, if you touch it, it's gonna sway a bunch. I mean, like if I run my finger right here, it moves away from my finger, so, I don't get a nice clean wipe on it. The way that you get around that is by taking another hook. Um, and you'll see, put this on my shoulder. I always put the rag on my shoulder. Let me make sure this is even in camera. Yeah. And then uh, you take another hook and put it in one of the bolt holes or any hole, I mean, whatever. Depends on what you're doing, obviously. In this case, it's diffuser. And this one has a weird notch up here where there was some damage to this diffuser. I'm probably going to have to get that with like a Q-tip. And all you're doing with the hook down here on the bottom is holding some tension on this. Um, the best way, I mean, you're going to want to make sure you don't touch it, period. But I pulled down and a little bit away just because I have, you know, it's a hook in it. So... And you're also going to want to make sure that your hook doesn't come through and touch anywhere over here. Um, I, I tried walking through, or walking a, a guy through this on, um, uh, what was it, like Facebook Messenger video chat or whatever. And the first thing he did is he put a hook through and then turned the hook and the hook automatically went in and snagged his part. So let me grab a Q-tip get that top piece here and we'll throw this one in the oven and move on to the next one okay and with the q-tip you're going to want to get it wet i uh i spit on it just to get it wet uh, just because if you don't get it wet basically it just like spreads the powder around a little bit of damage sucks in here. It's destroying this Q-tip. It was pretty jagged. I sanded out as much as I could, but that's going to have to do. Then you're, uh, you're all done. You just pull your hook back out. Check down here. Make sure everything's all good. I've actually never done one like this, so, I mean, I've never done a two-tone diffuser like this, so hopefully it turns out cool. I mean, it's what the customer wanted, so, cool or not. <laughs> I'll have to apologize, and I don't know if it's louder in here than normal. I'm running the, the fans. In here, it's uh, I'm gonna check the temperature here in a minute. It's almost, I think it's almost 100 degrees outside today. And the shop temperature is, oh, it's only 99. So <laughs> it gets, uh, you know, any of you guys that powder coat, especially in a shop, um, you know how hot it gets due to the oven coming open and, you know, being in and out of the oven constantly. And this is where, you know, doing this edge wipe that ultimately is pretty easy. Um, earlier when we sanded down all those edges, that's what made the big difference. I mean, all the visible edges that we were going to be sanding. 
or all the visible edges is what we were sanding or sanded out. And if you don't do that and they're all jagged, trying to wipe all the powder out of them is gonna be a nightmare. So, <clears throat> definitely benefits you to take some time to make sure all your edges are nice and smooth. And it's really this simple. I mean, you're, you're wiping off the powder that you don't want. Um, it's not any different. I mean, I think I've done two-tone stuff on this channel before. I actually have another two-tone project coming up as well. Um, but it's the exact same process. It doesn't matter. I mean, diffuser, or wheels, whatever. You spray powder where you want it, and then you wipe it off all the places that you don't on your second coat. Um, the one thing to remember is some of these... Some colors don't interact well. So I did a test shot with these to make sure it is sprayed out a panel, um, sprayed fireside copper on it, and then sprayed uh, tuxedo black over top of it just to make sure there was no bleed through issues. I put a piece of tape so I could really see a defined line to know um, if there was any issues with the fireside copper maybe coming through the black, but it all turned out well. So we'll keep going on these. I guess if you guys are watching this, um, you know, if you're powder coders or just general people who like watching these type of videos, um, you know, this is more of, I guess, kind of a how-to as opposed to the last couple of videos have just been me showing random powder coating jobs. Um, what else are you guys looking to see out of this channel? Um, I'm trying to find you know, I have some more how-tos. I got a, a great list right now of how-tos that I want to work on. Um, but, let's see if I can get this in this bowl without touching anything. Um, you know, what do you guys want to see more of? Do you want to see more of just the powder coating different projects? And, you know, when I list the KV and air pressure and... Uh, cure times all that shenanigans and just cool projects or general projects I mean I don't I don't record anywhere near everything that I do just because I feel like it would get pretty repetitive pretty boring um, but I don't know how much you guys want to see of just like the general stuff oh I'm having a super hard time with this um just seeing the general stuff versus, you know, how-tos specifically. I know a lot of the, you guys that powder coat want to see um, how-to stuff. And like I said, I, I have a bunch of upcoming how-tos. I got some great ideas from some of you guys, uh, some powder coat friends. Um, watched a couple more videos online of people giving terrible advice and that gave me more uh, ideas for how-tos. So either way, let me know. Let me know in the comment section um, what you guys want to see more of. Because I mean, ultimately, you know, this channel isn't for me. Uh, I already know most of this stuff. Um, although I do have a video coming up pretty quickly here um, where I do some like experimenting with colors. So um, it's going to be part of the mixing how-to that I have coming up, and I'm going to be doing some mixing of stuff that I have done before and know how to do and um, know what the expected outcome should be. And I'm gonna be doing some where I'm pretty confident that I know what I'm doing and have done enough other combinations similar to you know, be able to have a good idea of what the outcome should be. And then I'm just uh, gonna be grabbing some powder out of a bag and seeing what I can come up with. Uh, I have a bunch of partial bags of powder just chilling and I'm gonna be doing some spray outs on uh, I, I do a lot of color testing on I think they're Bud Light or Budweiser the aluminum bottles um, I worked out a great deal with my friends I don't drink um, 
and I can't even stand the smell of beer, honestly. So judge me, but I uh, I buy beer, give it to my friends, and just say the only rule is I get all the bottles back with no dents in them. So if you are a beer drinker and uh, can tolerate Budweiser or Bud Light, which I'm sure there'll be some debate, <laughs> um, their bottles are great for testing colors and you're gonna drink the beer anyway. Just realize I haven't turned the collector on for any of this. Oh, there we go. I'm so excited about how well this booth works. I think I've, I'm sure I've mentioned it in videos prior, but it just works so well. I mean, you see, as soon as I turn it on, it's pulling everything away, which is exactly what you want out of your booth. So yeah, anything that you guys want to see, make sure you leave down in the comments. I'm sure, you know, a lot of you guys that do leave comments and uh, questions, stuff like that, I'm sure that you see I answer basically everything I can. Um, I did find a, a section specifically for, it's like uh, YouTube comments that were held. They thought, you know, if YouTube thinks it's spam or if they think it's like, uh, like derogatory, like there was a couple that has had like random swear words that YouTube didn't think I would be able to handle as an adult. So, I remember how I sprayed these. Can't remember what edges of this are visible. Um, so yeah, I went through and answered a bunch of those, or like made it so they were visible, because YouTube hid them, basically. There we go. And I'm still chasing a video with 200 likes. I think I actually have one or two that ended up with 200 likes, but after a lot of time. I'm trying to get one like, right away so if you're if you're into it if you're enjoying this video or, you're, or you just want to help me achieve a random goal in life for no readily apparent reason hit that like button um, you know easy for you guys definitely bumps these videos up in uh, the YouTube algorithm which is super important for growing the channel which uh, just means that it helps more people, which is what I'm trying to do. So, I think I got this one twists weird right here. I don't know what's actually visible. I think none of this area is actually visible. I think I sanded it down on the off chance that it was. And then I realized afterwards that it's not. Touch this a little bit down here. Oh yeah, that's one of the other things. I guess I should mention this. I normally do this, and I guess me messing up is a prime example of why. I almost always work from the top down on stuff like this. Um, yeah, this is that, just not even visible. Um, and the reason that I do that is because you're knocking powder down the whole time. So, you know, if you start up at the top and start knocking powder down, it's fine. But if you start at the bottom and get your area all clean and then knock powder down from the top, it's going to go on the area that you just spent time getting ready. So, hopefully the camera picks this up fairly well. There's actually, I think I did two of these off camera. Um, I had a customer here, so I was just talking and working at the same time. So there are two of these that you're not gonna see. I guess ultimately the process is exactly the same, no matter what, so um, I don't know. There'll be video, of course, at the end. 
try to get everything at the end. I realize in the last couple of videos there was a couple of projects that I show me starting to coat and then there's no video of them being finished. <laughs> there's a Perrin intercooler bar. It's basically like a, a holder for the intercooler on a Subaru setup. And I started powder coating it. I think I was powder coating it. IFS satin black probably. And then I never posted it. Or never, never showed video of it after Kier, which kind of defeats the purpose unless you just find powder coating satisfying. That's one of the ones that I get all the time. People tell me that watching powder coating happen, like the actual powder application process is satisfying, which, I mean, maybe it is for some people, I don't know. This is my job, so it's, I don't get like super excited about it. <laughs> um, I get satisfied that the work gets done. That's pretty much the end of my satisfaction though. Doing this one without seeing it, like a savage. Let's see how that came out. Ooh, it was pretty all right for the first pass. And basically what you can do is, I mean, when you wipe this off the first pass, you're knocking most of it off. Um, the stuff that you don't get off, when you wipe your finger on the damp towel, it'll usually get everything off on the second pass. So, don't freak out when you wipe it one time and it's still there, it takes a minute. Um, I've also seen people do this with a Q-tip. I, I don't prefer to do the whole thing with a Q-tip. Uh, as you saw earlier, I used a Q-tip briefly for part of it, but I just feel like the Q-tip causes its own issues, um, especially with lint. And the Q-tips break down a little bit over time, or well, I mean, when I say over time, I mean like while using it one time, um, especially when you get it wet, it breaks down quite a bit. And that's real annoying. The other thing that's real annoying is how they bent this. They have this little notch in it so they know exactly where to bend it and it's making my life hard. All right, just got one more little area down here. Should be golden. Going on to the last piece. All right, so this one I ultimately should be using a flat tip for because um, it's literally just this top edge. Uh, and doing sheet metal. Flat tip's typically the best way to go. Uh, any sort of sheet metal, aluminum, steel, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna spray it this way and hope for the best. Um, you just wanna make sure you get good coverage, especially the areas that you're spraying, you know, a second coat theoretically on. You have your overspray areas on the top here. I need to put more powder in this hopper. I usually will turn the air pressure up and the KV down a little bit, just to try to get better coverage. You can see if I get too close, it actually blows it off, but ideally you don't get too close in this scenario. You can also go to a, a wider fan tip. If you're having an, an issue with it blowing off, powder blowing off rather, um, you can go to a bigger fan tip uh, to disperse the air further out. Uh, by default, it naturally slows down the further away it gets from the tip. So, just a little free pro tip. I guess all of these are free pro tips, technically. I have the air pressures up to like 12 right now, but this hopper is also almost empty. So, I turn it up higher when it's almost empty. I was thinking I might have to add more powder, but this appears to be enough to do the whole job. It doesn't take much to do 
sheet metal like this especially. Oh yeah, this is probably also a good time to let you guys know I'm doing another Q&A. This video will be out Saturday. Um, I can't think of what the date is, the 11th, I think. And I'm doing a live Q&A on Sunday, the 12th. That Q&A will be at um, noon Pacific Standard Time. Um, I don't want to confuse anybody. I am in Utah and we are Mountain Standard Time. Uh, but nobody ever knows what that is, so... <laughs> uh, everybody knows Pacific Standard Time, because that's what everything in the world is based off of, unless you're on the East Coast. Or everything in America is based off of, I should say. So, I'll be... I'm only going to be on for an hour. I'm not going to be in the shop to do anything, any work, but I'm going to try to answer you guys' questions. I know a couple people wanted to um, see what the inside of my hoppers is like, because I have an older style hopper that... I think is more effective and from the questions I get asked about them they also think is more effective so I'll show you guys that and uh, answer your questions I'm hoping that I'll have I think later today so I should have them by the weekend I'll have the my new shirts in as well you guys will be able to see those I don't know I don't know who all has messaged me asking about those but I know people have so hopefully you guys will be there to check them out All right, got these things out of the oven. Um, the copper red shows up pretty well on camera. It could be better, I guess, but um, I thought that was a thin spot, but it's just the reflection. Holy crap. But you can see the Ford Tuxedo Black. It's awesome color um, with the copper edges here. Uh, I mean, hopefully this is exactly what the customer was going for, and he's going to love it. I guess we'll find out. Until next time, got... Uh, like I said, a live Q&A will be the next video. And then I don't know what's after that, but there's a bunch of videos already planned. So stay tuned. Listen closely. I'm not going to shout. I've tried being humble. It's just not working out.